Welcome to my studio and welcome to this 10 minute watercolour masterclass. Let's get started. Now before we start painting I thought it might be nice to show you some of my style of watercolour. This is your classic landscape. Then I love to do these kind of nice watercolour vignettes, you know with that kind of soft faded edge. Beautiful wisteria here. There's a similar one with a butterfly. And I also absolutely love painting animals in watercolour. And that's an example of a woodpecker. So you can see I'm quite a varied artist. I like to produce detailed paintings, but detail where it matters. Let's get started with this 10 minute watercolour. So let's talk a little bit about materials. It's a minefield when you go out there and you see all the different brushes and papers and paints available here. I've got 14 colours, but I'm just going to show you how from three colours, a red, a yellow and a blue, you can produce some wonderful watercolours. These are called primary colours. You can mix any colour from, apart from black and white. We don't use white because the paper's white. We don't need black because it's too dark. We can mix a shadow colour from these three. These three here are the Matthew Palmer collection, the natural yellow light, Matthew Palmer's natural blue, and Matthew Palmer's natural red. But any bright yellow, bright blue, and a crimson kind of red would do the trick. Just a little squirt into the palette is all that's needed. The red is the, is the richest in the most, most saturated of all those colours. Um, nice clean blue as well here. So primary colours can go a long way. I've been teaching for well over 20 years. Three colours you can produce so much. Brushes. We're going to use two brushes here. We've got a size 10 brush, a round watercolour brush, and we have a size 6 round watercolour brush. We've got water in the water pot, we've got kitchen paper. Just want to mention the paper. Watercolour paper's got a texture and that texture is important. That texture keeps the paint crisp and clean. It allows the paint to be absorbed into the paper. This particular one is a quarter imperial size, 11 by 15 inch, okay? I want to paint a small picture in the center, but you could simply chop it in half. You might notice I've stuck this to a board, okay? You don't have to do that. I've used masking tape to stick it to a piece of wood, a piece of cardboard. A good tip is to get a very slight tilt on your board. The first thing I want to do with this particular painting is take some more masking tape. Let's take a little piece of masking tape here. Let's remove the stickiness by rubbing, rubbing it over the hands a few times or wiping the moisture from your brow. And then pop this just a little bit lower than center. Make sure it's relatively clean. Press that tape down well. And then let's use that size 10 watercolor brush. And very simply, I want to wet the top section of this paper. I want to show how to paint a beautiful sunset sky here. So it's quite simple just to wet the paper through. Work a little bit further out. I'm not going to fill the paper here. I want to paint what we call the vignette with that beautiful soft faded edge. That's working down to the tape there. Lovely. And then let's go and have a look at the palette. What we've also got here, by the way, is a round coin wrapped in some kitchen paper. Can you see that? So basically, I've folded this tissue in half and I've wrapped around. It's an old pound coin from the UK, actually. But that's great for stamping out the sun. We'll see that in action a little bit later. What I want to do here is clean the brush, pop a little bit of water in the palette, take that rich yellow. Don't be afraid to use the yellow quite strong. Bring that yellow... Bring that yellow straight in, let the paint flow down the paper. Work this down to the tape, don't be afraid to go over the tape. It will creep down the back a little bit, that's absolutely fine. Then let's go back to the palette again. Don't be afraid to use that colour quite strong. Clean the brush, wipe off the excess water on the side. Let's introduce some of the red, of course that will give us a nice fiery orange. You might notice I'm wiping the brush on the side as well, that's a good thing to do. I'll bring that in. I want to sweep that down into the yellow and let it mix. Can you see that forward and back like you're conducting an orchestra? If you've ever done that, then you'll have an advantage here. Make sure this all nicely softens in. Back down to the palette again. Clean the brush. Wipe off that excess. I've been teaching, like I say, for well over 20 years, almost 23 years now, actually. And watercolour is such a beautiful medium. Stunning. Introducing blue into this colour. Can you see it starts to go a little bit darker? almost towards a grey. Now that's an important lesson grey because grey is the colour of shadows. Notice the little wipe on the side. Now if we come back to the sky here, we're going to put this across the top and then we're going to work it down so it mixes. 
if you've seen an evening sky, it kind of mixes within the reds and the yellows. Beautiful, and let it just disappear into the picture. Now what I want to do is take that coin, this round coin here, I'm going to press it firmly against the paper. You can decide where you want to put this, but just a single firm press and remove, and you've captured that beautiful sun. That works every time. Now on this brush is a little bit of that grey, and we can see it on the tissue. If I remove some of that grey, so it's what we call the dry brush, I'm ever so gently going to do a little twist of the bristle. This is something to practice, okay? And I'll, I will say that the sky does work without this, so don't worry too much if you don't manage to get this effect. But the paper is still damp, remove the excess on the tissue before you do this. And it's a little wiggle with the tip of that size 10 brush. Now it's nice to bring this over the top of the sun, you often see a little cloud just creeping across the sun here. And then a little piece down here as well, a few little spots at the side, and it makes a wonderful cloud effect, love it. Clean the brush really well, squeeze it through those fingers. And then let's take this kind of flat brush and then just run it across the bottom, soften away any hard lines at the base. So to extend the edges. Beautiful. Now what you can do, see the squeeze. Can we see how gorgeous and flat the brush has gone there? Now it allows me just to go in and just lightly soften and almost remove a little bit of the colour. Doesn't matter if that doesn't happen, but it works lovely. Do you not know think? Really adds some atmosphere to this. What I want to do now is take some more of that grey I'm going to paint in some distant, misty mountains or hills in the back here. So I'm doing the same thing, wiping off that excess. If you struggle to mix the grey because it's made from three colours, the simple logic is mix the orange and add blue to it. It works, okay? Or you can mix purple from red and blue and add, add yellow to it. Look at those gorgeous misty mountains riding that distance there, loving that. Let's allow that to dry. Now, drying can be done with a hair dryer, or you can just leave it to dry off its own back. Nice and dry. Very carefully take the tape off. Now, if you pull it down away from those mountains, it'll reduce any risk of ripping. The hair dryer will actually heat up the adhesive as well, allowing the tape to be removed without too much mess. Look at that clean line. If you get a little bit of paint that creeps down the back of the tape, it does happen, just remove the tape, lower it down, and paint some more hills or mountains over the top. Let's turn this into a bit of a wintry landscape. Quickly back down to the palette literally just using blue with a tiny bit of the red, just a little speck, too much red and it'll go too rich, but that slight purple color works absolutely lovely. Clean that brush, not too thick with the consistency. I'm also gonna take a little bit of the orange as well. I'm gonna mix some orange, like we did before from the yellow and a touch of the red. Remember, it's always a touch of red. This red is quite a bright red and that orange is featured in the sky. So these two colours are going to create a wonderful finishing touch to this painting. Let's use the purple or the violet mix. Let's bring it across the foreground here. Pretty much all the way across. But make it wider on the left side. Clean the brush really well and give it a couple of taps on the tissue. Remember this is just using the one brush for this picture. At this stage, you could bring in the smaller size six brush if you need to at any point. But adding little bits of detail. So make sure you soften this. Move it across and really soften it over. Notice I keep cleaning the brush in the water, giving it a few wipes on the tissue here. And just basically continuing to smooth that colour to create that distant landscape. I can go back into this. The stronger the violet or the purple in this foreground area, the more depth it creates in the painting. Keep cleaning that brush. You can see how it's starting to capture that lovely sort of wintry atmosphere. Now, the orange was just to add a little bit of hint of color from the sky. Just a little touch, just that little tiny bit there. Notice again, the lines are horizontal and softening in. 
Now, if you're new to watercolours and you've produced something like this in 10, 15 minutes, hopefully you'd be pleased that you've, you've created a wonderful, quick watercolour painting. Now, when it comes to detail brushes, this size 6 brush we can see here has got a beautiful point on this and that makes the world a difference because I can use this like a pencil. If your size 6 brush hasn't got that same point, it doesn't really matter too much. Let's come down, you can always use a smaller brush, okay. Let's come down to the palette with the 6 brush. We've got the grey from, from earlier, remember that was the orange with the blue in it, 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 it turns a grey colour. But I want to make a little bit of a brown here. How do you make browns? So what you do is you put the water in first, a fairly strong yellow, fairly strong yellow, and then we add the red till it goes orange. Too much red, just put more yellow back, and then I'll add a touch of blue, and the blue will turn that colour. And can you see it starting to go towards a brown mix? So we've got the brown, we've got the grey here as well, perfect for this. And basically, what I want to do is I just want to introduce a little bit of foreground interest with this brown. Now, when it comes to detail, a good tip is to sort of rotate the brush over the tissue, through your fingers, but over the tissue at the same time, because that'll twist the tip. Again, if you struggle, use something smaller. Now, when it comes to detail brushes, this size six brush we can see here has got a beautiful point on this, and that makes the world a difference because I can use this like a pencil. If your size six brush hasn't got that same point, doesn't really matter too much. Let's come down, you can always use a smaller brush, okay. Let's come down to the palette with the six brush. We've got the gray from, from earlier. Remember that was the orange with the blue in it. It, it, it turns a gray color. But I wanna make a little bit of a brown here. How do you make browns? So what you do is you put the water in first, a fairly strong yellow, fairly strong yellow. And then we add the red till it goes orange. Too much red, just put more yellow back and then I'll add a touch of blue, and the blue will turn that colour, and can you see it starting to go towards a brown mix. So we've got the brown, we've got the grey here as well, perfect for this, and basically what I want to do, is I just want to introduce a little bit of foreground interest with this brown. Now, when it comes to detail, a good tip is to sort of rotate the brush over the tissue, through your fingers, but over the tissue at the same time, because that'll twist the tip. Again, if you struggle, use something smaller. So in this corner here, I'm gonna paint in some little branches. Now, paint these branches in the direction that the actual foliage or the branch would grow. And again, a great tip is to wipe off that excess paint all times. Something I always encourage people to do. Again, remember, you can always use a smaller brush at any time you wish. If you struggle to use this particular one. And then I want to bring in some of that grey colour as well, which I've still got in the palette. Again, notice the wipe on the tissue just to add a bit of interest, just to put a little bit of darkness in. And then I'm gonna pop some little spots across the top of this. I'm thinking sort of cow parsley in the winter. It leaves a wonderful sort of skeleton shape behind. Looks really effective and it just lifts the foreground up. Now, if we stipple the brush, if we stipple the brush in the palette, sort of squash it down like this, squash it down head on into the paint, practice this one. So if we take a look at the brush now, we can see it's got this beautiful sort of spiky edge to it, something to practice. And that will allow me to stipple very gently in this foreground and around the tops of these. A little bit of a sort of wintry bush, a little bit of a plant that's, that's kind of died off for the winter. So that little bit of winter foliage is actually quite an effective thing to do. And again, I can bring in the grey if I want to as well. So it's not just about using the... the brown. Try alternating the colour. And that little bit of foreground just kind of lifts the picture forward towards me, which is quite an important thing to mention. And because I'm doing this in the style of a vignette, it's really effective to add that. Now, 
if I dry that brush off, really dry the brush off, and give the brush a bit of a spike, again, a technique what's very widely used in watercolours is called dry brush and one to practice. And basically what you do is you lightly sort of skim the gorgeous textured surface of this paper. And it just kind of hits and misses. Now I can do this across the landscape at any point I feel. Keep it in horizontal streaks, but practice the dry brush. There's almost zero paint on that brush, but the textured surface of the paper. Just going to do a little bit of this across the distant misty hills. Same, same dry brush. Keep, keep pinching the base of the brush. Just lightly skim the edge. It just brings a little bit of clarity and a little bit of form into those mountains if, if you feel the need for it. <laughs> 